powerful beings arrive in a magical world and wreak havoc before facing off against each other in a tournament to decide who comes out on top. The story begins in the maze-like city of Nagin, where a girl named Yona attends school. A teacher explains that word arts can change natural phenomena, but only work in their world, not in the world of visitors. During class, Yona watches her classmate Lucille's. After class, Lucille's asks her to teach her force arts since she's skilled. Yona agrees and explains that Negin is a scholarly city built around the great labyrinth of Kyosun. Meanwhile, swordsmen battle a mechanical golem from the labyrinth. They defeat it once, but it reactivates, and they keep fighting while Yono teaches Lucille's force arts, and she successfully manages to lift a stone. At lunch, Lucille's talks about Oriasia and mentions the United Western Kingdom's queen, who created Oriasia. They watch the labyrinth while eating cookies, discussing its many relics and the open path to glory as Yono thinks the Age of Fear ended when the Demon King died. An earthquake hits, destroying the town center. Yono and Lucille's manage to survive, but a golem kills Lucy, and Yono escapes the chaotic city. She despairingly wishes she had died too, feeling this understood even after the Demon King's death. Outside town, a golem attacks her, but she defeats it with word arts and regrets not saving Lucy as she starts crying. More golems appear, but a swordsman rescues her, remarking that life is about to get fun. Yono learns the swordsman is Sujiru Yaju, a visitor who defeats golems easily and despite her warnings, he starts battling a giant golem, using its own movements to dismantle it. Yono is amazed and considers the labyrinth's sudden activation, possibly due to Sujiru as he finds the golem's weak spots and defeats it before eating Yono's rations and talking about the next adventure. Yono decides to guide Sujiru to Oriasia, since there are powerful enemies they are relieving which he agrees to. Yono introduces herself as Yono the Distant Talon, and the narrator explains that Sujiru, known for his swordsmanship and understanding of weak spots, seeks worthy opponents in a world full of dangers and mysteries. The real Demon King, who terrified the world, is dead, but no one knows who killed him. Now the Age of Fear is over, but a new hero needs to be chosen. In the Principality of Lithia, General Taran the Guarded has declared independence from Oriasia, the only minion kingdom, creating tension. Lana the Moon Tempest, a spy for Taran, is returning to Lithia. On her carriage ride, she notices wyverns chasing them and asks the driver if they can outrun them. The driver doubts it, but a mercenary named Higuer assures her he can handle the threat as Lana talks about the true demon king, distinguishing him from others who claim the title. Wyverns and bandits attack the carriage, but the bandits are defeated by tamed wyverns led by Regenji. Lana explains that Regenji and his wyverns protect the principality. They suspect the bandits are being directed by someone, possibly Oriasia, the only remaining minion kingdom. In Oriasia, officials Haido and Jelki discuss their strategies against Lithia, considering assassination over war before mentioning the vortical stampede and deciding to use it. In Tyat Ravine, General Hargant leads a dragon hunting squad and they encounter Vikyan, an injured dragon, who says a wyvern caused his wounds. A wyvern named Hoshidae's Alice steps in, showing his ambition and skills. Hargant and Alice face Vikyan together, with Alice using magic bullets and an artifact to defeat the dragon. Hargant invites her to join the search for a hero in Oriasia, but Alice heads to the labyrinth city of Nagan instead. Alice is a skilled and ambitious wyvern, known for his unique magic items and victories over many challenges, and his desires have made him surpass dragons becoming the fastest airborne creature. Taran the Guarded is making her daily rounds in Lithia when a boy approaches her. Taran asks what's wrong, mentioning she has no sweets for him so the boy says his father is grateful to Taran for helping him get more customers, and he wants to thank her. Taran explains she's just doing her duty to ensure Lithia's citizens don't suffer. The boy gives Taran a handmade box. The narrator explains that Taran has seen many battles and was once a top general in Oriasia. She declared independence after the true Demon King's death and now gets ready for war with Oriasia. Heading to her office, she ponders the impending war and her need to prepare. Inside, she greets Dakar, who asks how she knew he was there. She reveals it was a guest to see his reaction. Dakar gives her a lens, which she identifies as the Cold Star, a powerful ancient magic item, and praises his resourcefulness. He asks what it is, and she explains its destructive potential. Dekka remarks on its danger, and Taran notes that items from the distant world are never gentle. 
She wonders if Dakar thinks of himself as gentle and comments on his lethal weapon, the magic blade Razakot. Dakar mentions other items but not the golem, hinting at someone strong. Taran assigns him a new task, uncover the outlaws attacking Lithia's merchant carriages, so he eliminates the spies posing as merchants, noting their tactics. Meanwhile, Renji executes a traitorous wyvern and reflects on his leadership. Later, he converses with the blind girl, Kurt, who sings to him and thinks about Lithia's future. Before Renji reveals his role in the coming war as the narrator describes Renji as a powerful force in the skies. In Oriasha's central detention center, a soldier informs Haido about a report from Mage City headquarters. Haido asks if the new principality issues fall under his jurisdiction, and the soldier confirms. The soldier states that Third Minister Jelki reported losing communication with 10 Secret Service members in a single day. Haido suspects their base was surrounded and wonders if anyone escaped so the soldier confirms that none got out, even though all were elite agents. Haido asks how many men are needed to handle this, and he requests 64 men from the 16th Squad and a sniper team, noting that 17th Minister Ilya is currently undercover and unreachable. Haido mentions he hasn't been officially appointed, and thinks everyone acts independently before the soldier suggests sending new undercover agents. But Hedo disagrees, proposing they camp east of Mage City headquarters, in a sunken ground for a surprise attack. He then bangs on a prison cell waking Nidhalo, and explains that ten agents in Lithia were killed. Nidhalo says she only needs one person to handle it before Hedo describes her as the vortical stampede, capable of defeating an entire army. In Ada's Sylvan province, 17th Minister Ilya takes a bath in a hot spring, discussing word arts with a girl named Yuka. Ilya explains the four main systems, thermal, craft, force, and life arts, and demonstrates each, impressing Yuka. Later, Ilya meets Kia, who shows her unique word arts. Ilya advises Kia to use her power responsibly, as she will soon go to Lithia and bids farewell to the villagers revealing her true mission to secure Kia's participation in an imperial competition in Oriasia. She believes Kia's exceptional abilities will ensure victory, and as they visit Yuka's favorite spot, she reflects on Kaya's invincibility and potential to take over the world with her word arts, Kaya the World Word. In the main fortress of Lithia, Taran meets with Shulk and Higuer and praises Lana for bringing them, but points out Lana's inability to find the World Word. Lana argues that the idea of such powerful word arts is exaggerated, suggesting that if they truly existed, they could easily win any battle. Taran agrees, but proposes they come up with a plan to manage people with such abilities if they are real. They then discuss Higwe the Pelagic, renowned for his unbeaten record as a gladiator in distant areas, before Higwe recounts his past as a mandrake, kidnapped and forced into fighting. Despite being enslaved, he rose to become the strongest gladiator through observation and survival instinct. Meanwhile, in Raisha Mountain Village, Hughes and Haido plan their journey, and he suggests they stay at an orphanage run by a religious group for shelter, but Hido doubts his strength. At the orphanage, Hughes reunites with Ripple and introduces Nililo, explaining her release from being trapped. Ripple remembers a visit from Oriation soldiers led by Sir Hargant. Later, as Hughes stands watch, Attackers attack Ripple, so he rushes to defend her, revealing his combat prowess. Despite his efforts, Ripple is fatally wounded, and he starts thinking about life's vulnerability and the existence of angels. As Ripple passes away, Q's vows to honor her memory and tells Nililo about his belief in angels, sharing his personal experience as the narrator says she is a stabber, she is an angel, and she is Nastik the Quiet Sooner. Mage City is revealed as the closest outpost to the new Principality of Lithia, serving as Oriasha's base to keep an eye on Lithia. Haido meets Yuno and Sojuru there, apologizing for his lateness. He thanks Yuno for her information and identifies Sujuru as the Willow Sword before they discuss Taran the Guarded and her Wyvern army, with Haido asking Sujuru to step in to prevent war. Sujuru asks about the hero competition, but Haido explains it'll happen later, seeing it as a test for Sujuru. Sujuru agrees casually, while Yuno reminds him of Hido's importance. Yuno asks to go with Sujuru to Lithia, and Hido agree. Meanwhile, Renji finds Dakai in Kurt's room, and they clash. They start arguing, and Renji defends Kurt. But Dakai suggests Lana leaked Kurt's diary to Oriasia. Ilya, watching, realizes Lana's revelation may involve her before Kaya joins, 
and Elia makes up a story about Lana being kidnapped, thinking of escaping and Lana's possible betrayal using Kia's abilities. In Lithia, Elia and Kaya talk about her mission to cut ties between herself and Kaya before the competition. Meanwhile, Ilya tries to distract her while Lana meets Dakai who accuses Lana of being the spy, talking about her expertise and the diary. Lana denies it but is taken to Taran, with Ilya and Kaya watching as she wonders if one could kill Lana and escape from Lithia without leaving a trace with Kaya's almighty word arts. In the outskirts of Mage City, Sujuru and Yuno join the guards on patrol, heading towards the Lithian border. Yuno notices how close they are to Lithia and worries about the danger because of the unstable situation. The captain tries to reassure her, explaining the diplomatic relationship between Oriasia and Lithia, and despite their friendly appearances, tensions remain high, with Oriasia patrolling at Lithia's request to deal with outlaw attacks. Yuna questions why they're there, realizing it's more about politics than actual security. The captain admits that Oriasia is trying to weaken Lithia by draining its resources and taking advantage of any mistakes. Sujiru, disappointed by the lack of action, talks about confronting Taran, Lithia's leader, to provoke any differences. When the patrol meets Shulk and Heger, Sujiru starts fighting Shulk but isn't able to keep up with his speed. Despite Sujiru's efforts, he gets hurt as Higuer easily takes down Oriasia's soldiers with poison. In Mage City, Haido and Hagent discuss the growing conflict, so Hagent suggests sending military support to deal with the wyvern threat caused by Lithia's aggression. However, Haido disagrees due to Hagent's recent failures and the complexity of the situation after which they witness Taran's calculated attack on the city's defenses. Haido mobilizes the resources, including deploying queues as Nihilo is ordered to join the fight after she's promised equality and education in return for loyalty. Despite doubts, Haido sees her as a vital asset in the coming battle, and as she activates a mechanical spider and prepares for battle, she gleefully remarks that it's been a while since she had her body and declares that she's finally free. Dakai meets Yuno and Lithia, who are captured just hours before the bombardment starts. He reassures Yuno she's not imprisoned or under interrogation, seeing her as an ordinary person. Yuno wonders why she's here, and Akai explains it's because Haiga can't ride a horse. He apologizes for her situation, but says he has other tasks, leaving her alone. Yuno recognizes him as Dakai the Magpie due to his sword, so she introduces herself and accuses him of causing the giant golem's movement by clearing the labyrinth. Dakai blames Negin's scholars, saying the city would have been destroyed anyway, so Yuno confronts him about the deaths caused, accusing him of starting a war. Dakai denies wanting to start a war, saying people choose war and he's not interested. Yuno sees him and Sujiru as similar, not caring about those they harm, and she vows to get revenge on him, but Dakai remains unaffected, inviting her to try. Yuno hesitates, realizing the seriousness of revenge. Dakai advises her to start afresh rather than seek revenge, and promises to release her once things settle outside, and Yuno breaks down, remembering her friend Lucille's. Meanwhile, in Lithia's central citadel, Taran plans to rule through fear and use the Cold Star's power to start a war. Shulk suggests fleeing, but Taran refuses, determined to instill fear and defeat opposition. Dakai warns of an approaching danger, and Rengji is ordered to attack the Mage City instead. The scene shifts to the Mage City after the bombardment, where citizens struggle against wyvern assaults. Hargant, Ariasha's sixth general warns of Lithia's betrayal and urges defense. Alice helps defend against wyverns, motivating citizens to seek revenge. Hargant encourages them to fight back and promises support from a distance. Meanwhile, in Lithia, Kaya and Ilya search for Lana to rescue her. Kai uses her abilities to find Lana, but Ilya warns against attracting attention. They encounter soldiers, whom Ilya eliminates to avoid detection. They find Lana injured, and Ilya considers killing her to protect their secret. Higuer interrupts attacking them. Care protects them unintentionally causing Higuer's death. Lana disappears during the chaos, and Ilya decides to leave, fearing exposure. Kaya insists on saving Lana, and they leave, unaware of Nastik's role in Higuer's death. Sujiru moves towards the Lithian border, noticing the soldiers ready for combat. When they shoot at him, he easily deflects their bullets, criticizing their aim. They ask if he's an Oriation assassin before Nihilo suddenly appears, swiftly taking down soldiers with threads from her suit. 
Despite the cannons, she keeps fighting, looking for Wyvern soldiers. Sujiru asks about who she is, but Nihila recognizes him as Sujiru the Willow Sword, claiming to be on his side. Sujiru says he won't let her cause chaos alone and challenges her so she wonders why she should fight him. But he insists because she's strong. They briefly clash, and he notices she only has one life before she finishes off the rest of the soldiers, prompting Sujiru to follow her. She enters Lithia, realizing one of her eyes is damaged from Sujiru's attack. Impressed by the fact that he could damage her armor, she wonders about his sword's material and the threat he poses. Upon spotting Wyverns, she swiftly takes them out, accepting her role to destroy everything. Meanwhile, Harhint and Alice head to Lithia. Surviving Wyverns inform Regenji of Alice's arrival, so Regenji prepares his swarm to counter Alice's magic items. As Alice attacks, sacrificing Wyverns protect Regenji who aims to defeat him, knowing his magical weapons. When Alice arrives, Regenji boasts of his swarm's power, controlling beetles with life arts to corman him, and despite Regenji's taunts, Alice strikes with his luminous blade, dodged by Regenji. As the beetles overwhelm him, Regenji claims victory, but he draws attention to the tower, where flames burn the wyverns. Barely alive, Alice bids farewell to Regenji, who acknowledges his defeat as Alice prepares to finish him off. Nihilus attracts the enraged mage city refugees, looking for revenge for their ravaged home by attacking Lithia's people. In the inferno-lit city, Kia and Ilya are searching for Lana and think about whether the fire comes from rogue mage city forces or other origins. Meeting mage to see refugees, they start getting threatened until Shulk intervenes, saving them. He asks about where they're from, so Kia explains that they're outsiders from Ada's Sylvan province. While grateful for Shulk's help, Kai criticizes his deadly methods, which he agrees with, then steers them eastward for evacuation. Upon reaching the evacuation point, Ilya says they should leave the city, fearing for their safety. However, Kia, wanting to rescue Lana, insists on staying since she believes in her own abilities. Despite Eli's fear, Kai convinces her to remain by her side and as they search for Lana, Elia thinks about Kaya's determination amid the chaos, wondering whether she should spare Lana. The Kai finds out about Lithia's struggles in the war before Nihilo approaches, leaving him as the only survivor of his group. She praises his strength but warns of oncoming destruction before launches an attack on him, but he spots her armor's core weakness and decides to stop her by targeting her nervous system while dodging her attacks. Using a stolen blade, he identifies and takes advantage of her weakness, unlocking her armor's hatch and defeating her. Meanwhile, Lana goes through the tower, thinking of the city's misery and the spirits of monsters. Encountering the Cold Star, she's joined by Kia and Ilya before Kaya unleashes her powers, aiming to remove the horrors of the city. Ilya, not wanting to reveal Kaya's abilities, says she should control herself after which Kaya finally stops the flames, consoling Lana. Initially terrified, Lana finds comfort in their presence, realizing they don't mean any harm. Dakai enters Yuno's room, confirming his promise to help her despite the ongoing war. Yuno questions his ability to help during this chaos, so Dakai says he's fulfilling his vow as Lithia's fate is sealed, blaming Higbe for involving Yuno. Despite being seen as a villain, Dakai declares that he's always truthful, so Yuno asks why he doesn't care about Lithia's destruction expressing her pain over even a single death. Dakai, unmoved, declares that he isn't interested and decides to move on from Taran's death. Yuno, reminded of his promise of revenge, attacks him with her abilities, but he deflects her strikes, questioning her sincerity in combat. Meanwhile, Regenji warns Kurt to escape before Oriation forces arrive, revealing his defeat and Lithia's downfall as Harkent, the sixth general of Oriasia, appears, Kurt, recognizing Hargent's connection decides to accept defeat, so Hagen questions Kurt's allegiance and moves to arrest Regenji, but she defends him, revealing Regenji's help and her personal bond. Hagen, unmoved, says he is a threat that needs to be eliminated, and she acknowledging Regenji's true nature, admitting how she pretended she didn't know the truth. She tells Regenji that he's always been her angel before he rushes to attack Hagen, but both he and Kurt get shot. Lying in a pool of blood, they desperately try to reach out towards each other before Kurt goes numb and passes away before Hargent realizes Alice was the one who shot Kurt. Meanwhile, Yuno angrily tries fighting Dakai, who says he doubts they'll meet again, and gets ready to leave, but Sujiru appears in front of him. 
Yuna reveals to Dakai that she knew she wouldn't be able to beat him from the start, so he admits he did find it strange how the arrows up her sleeves were decreasing. Yuna says she thought he might still be alive and says Sujiru traveled with her via the arrows she left behind her. The Kai starts laughing and admits he can't believe this girl got the better of him, before Sujiro says they should stop talking and start the fight already, remarking that he makes it sound like being too strong is a bad thing, so the Kai says being alone is freedom before they start battling. Their duel ends with Sujiru stabbing him in the chest, leaving Dakai to pump at his defeat and Sujiru's skill. Kyu's visits Taran and tells her about his meeting with her daughter before she realizes he's from Oriasia and worries about Kurt. Kyu's acknowledges that he couldn't reach Kurt on time and questions Taran's motives, so she admits she wants to replace Oriasia, relying on mercenaries and wyverns for power. Q suspects Oriation involvement and wonders if there's a plot to set monsters against each other before. Taran reveals that she deeply cares for Kurt, so Q's, as a holy knight, offers Taran some final words. Reflecting on her regrets and desire for a hero, Taran's vulnerability moves Q's. In honor of her daughter's wish, he promises her safety. Meanwhile, Nana wanders alone, tortured by fear and memories of fleeing from Ili and Kia, affected by her illness. She suspects foul play and falls victim to poison, unnoticed. Later, Oriation soldiers face the consequences and Hedo discusses his plans with Hargant, wanting to absorb Lithia into Oriation territory under the excuse of recovery. While citizens flee, Kia and Ilya contemplate their roles. Despite grappling with power, Kai vows to protect Ilya regardless of the consequences. Meanwhile, Hedo mourns Nihila's death and meets Alice, who says he wants to join Oriasia's imperial competition. In Oriasia, Jelki and Yuka ponder the hero's absence, considering methods to secure the nation's future, so Sephite suggests to create a hero, but Yuka proposes a tournament. Determined to make changes, Jelki decides to find a hero and take down potential threats as the Age of Fear comes to an end, and the person has to be chosen. The Shura now have four names, Alice, Kia, Nastik, and Sujuru. That's it for this video, make sure to like and subscribe and watch this next video on screen.